Hello everyone and welcome back then guys to AOR Season 14 and today we're here for the Monaco Grand Prix, the jewel in the Formula 1 crown and if you did miss out on last week's episode I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking out. It was quite an important race for me in terms of the season but I'm going to leave you on board then with my fastest qualifying lap around the Monaco Grand Prix. Down towards the line then and we're going to be a few tenths up on my previous best but unfortunately it is no improvement then ready for the start of the Monaco Grand Prix. I actually dropped down to P9 but unfortunately TRL Ellis did end up having uh, disconnecting sorry from the session there but we were we were not set for an enjoyable race it was a hundred percent stormy conditions for the Monaco Grand Prix. Now I've never actually finished an AOR Monaco Grand Prix either so that was you know, probably going to be the top aim, you know, today was going to aim to survive this race. I was hoping it was going to be quite a race of attrition, but we shall wait and see how well everyone does fare. But here we are then, five lights on the grid, ready for the Monaco Grand Prix. And it's a lights out, and away we wheel spin there. Going to make sure we get right to the inside nice and early on. My teammate Coldhead just in front of me here breaks very, very early down in towards Turn 1. I trim the apex ever so slightly there, fighting the back end on the exit. We've now got Midget. Trying to look around my outside, up the hill towards the casino square section of this circuit. He's going to look down the inside, but I'm going to try and hold it right around the outside of there. Both Williams clatter the barriers as we go through that corner there. But Coldhead doesn't get a particularly good run out of it. I sort of box in midget behind him. I'm going to dive down the inside of my teammate Coldhead here. The Williams making even more contact there as we come down in towards the hairpin. We're still side by side. I nearly run it into the tyre barrier on the outside there. We're still side by side here. I'm going to keep the front end just about down the inside. He runs a little bit deep. I'm going to be able to go back down the inside again there and through towards the exit there. I nearly squeeze him out into the wall on the exit of that corner there down in towards the tunnel. But somehow after nearly half a lap there we've actually been able to come out on top Oh, my teammate Coldhead. I don't really want to be doing that again, considering we are in the fight for the Constructors' Championship. Just, just ignore that cheeky three-second time penalty as well there. But yeah, that was certainly, you know, not the perfect way to start the Monaco Grand Prix, but quite exciting, and we, and we made up a position. And I think, you know, that is one of the most important things that we can take away from the start of this race. But you see, P1 R Brown just up ahead of me here in the Haas car. You know, a little bit slow in places here. I'm sort of hoping the front six could sort of bunch up and I could try and latch on to the back of them. Now, I don't have no idea how well my consistency was going to be during this Grand Prix, so we'd have to wait and see what did happen as we now skip on towards the end of lap two here. P1 R Brown all over the back of Franglish here as we go down in towards the final couple of corners, and Brown actually runs very, very deep there. I think he's got quite a bit of front wing damage on that car. We go down the inside. He now dives it into the pit lane there, so now we're up into P6 of the Monaco Grand Prix. So we've actually made places up off at the start of this race. And I don't think, you know, really we can actually, we can ask much more than that. But as we now skip on towards the end of lap 5 here, through the swimming pool section, we've completely lost the back end there. That has completely damaged the front wing. And I think, you know, we all know what that does mean in the Monaco Grand Prix. It's time for my first pit stop of the day. We opted actually to go one more lap before we did make our stop here. But yeah, certainly... As I said, I was hoping this was going to be a race of attrition, so I was going to pit as many times as I needed and just try and take home any points that I could potentially score here. So I'm going to dive it into the pits, go on to a fresh set of the tyres and also change the front wing. And, you know, hopefully, actually, you know, if the pace is good and I can get a bit clearer, then potentially, you know, I could think about trying to undercut Franglish in the long run in this race. Unfortunately, anti-stall the car there 
in the pit lane, released the clutch just that tiny bit too early, which did cost me, you know, another second or two in around Monaco. That can be absolutely crucial there, as Die Hard Fan does actually come out ahead of me at this moment. He's actually got a pad. Don't really want to get caught up behind the pad users too much in this Grand Prix, and as we come out of the pit lane now, they're being very, very cautious on the exit of the pits. But fortunately for me, Die Hard, he didn't really make it too much of an issue for me. He binned it actually coming out of the hairpin there, but I nearly bin it going through the uh, the new the next chicane. They dig the wall on the exit. Die Hard has a look back at the inside, but thinks better of it as he had a bit of front wing damage there. So it's certainly it's been it's been a you know hectic first few laps of this Monaco Grand Prix. But I wanted to set myself up down in a rhythm for the rest of this Grand Prix. And now as we skip on to lap 15, it got fairly lonely for myself. We had quite a few laps of sort of just driving around by myself. We actually came around now to the lap icebergs here. The Toro Rosso's far from having a good day in this Grand Prix. The ice, you know, was not really, you know, I was in the rain, especially I sort of find that it does really strain my eyes, which means that I do tend to struggle in the long run. And, you know, I found this on F1 and Forza, you know, the, sort of the way the rain works and the way it sort of uh, blurs up your screen. It does really, really mess up my head. Even even commentating it now is actually hurting my brain just a little bit. I'm not going to lie, guys. But onto the end of a lap 17, we're actually going to dive it in onto a set of the intermediate tyres. And because P1 R Brown was, you know, setting fastest laps of the Grand Prix, I thought, yeah, let's let's change up. Let's have a bit of a strategy change. You know, win it or bin it. I think is the right way to describe it. So we're going to come out of the pits just out ahead of him. Then nearly bin it on the exit of the pit lane. There, lucky that I didn't actually get a warning. Thanks to that. But yeah, coming out of the pit lane then, we are going to stay out ahead of P1R Brown for this moment in time. But now, as we skip on a bit further on, around lap 18, and unfortunately, I have gone and dinked the wall through that chicane there. Certainly, certainly not what I intended to do during this Grand Prix. But hey-ho, you know, we can only try and focus on continuing on in this Grand Prix and see what we can do. But one lap later, being the noob that I am, I go and dink the wall again because obviously, you know, I've done it once. Why on earth don't I want to keep making that mistake? So there we are then. We've let another, we've let another position through to the mighty midget here who's actually a pad user, which is certainly, certainly not ideal for myself here. And now we got caught behind him for lap after lap after lap after lap and it took me all the way to that 35 before anything could happen between you know myself and midget and as we now come through in towards the final few corners of this lap we've actually now got extra old bobbits all over the back of us here so midget on the pad just completely parking it exactly where he needs to the only real place out of chance was down at rascas and i looked down the inside there but he just you know he was just able to keep his car positioned in the right places i don't know honestly how he was able to hold on 17 laps just in front of me here, but Bobbitt's now got a bit of a better run out of the final corner than me, and he's going to think about going for a move down the inside there. I give him the room, thinking he had completely been it on the exit of the corner there. And for, apologies to Bobbitt's as well, I accidentally squeezed him into the wall ever so slightly on the exit there, as I was just trying to get the power down, and still trying to focus on the car ahead of me here of Midget, and as we now break down a couple of laps later here, coming through this horrible chicane once more, and I've got to dig to the wall again, only for the third time in this race. Bobbitts goes through, uh, Brown goes through, and fortunately for me, there was about a 40 second gap to the next car behind being Herschel. It was also a lap down, so as long as I stayed on the lead lap of this Grand Prix, it was probably just about going to be alright for myself here. But now, as we skip on to the final lap of the Grand Prix, nothing else really happened apart from, you know, a very, very pad driving wayward icebergs ahead of me here, who completely bins it into the final couple of corners of the Grand Prix, but we're going to dive down the inside. We're going to come out of the final corner. Honestly, happy that I survived the Monaco Grand Prix. Only two points in the bag in the end. They're a little bit unfortunate about that, but I think we can all safely agree that my win last week was definitely a bit on the lucky side there, so I was very, very happy to take home P9 in there. P uh, two points, sorry, overall scored from that race, and, you know, just going to try and keep the points tally ticking up. But now, as you can see, LGS did actually come through to win that Grand Prix. He was the sixth winner in six races in this season. So congrats to him. Franklish second, Sam F1, the ever-consistent Sam F1 in P3. With Coldhead fourth, Nopals fifth, P1R Brown sixth, Midget seventh, Bobbers eighth, myself ninth, Herschel tenth, with 44 seconds worth of penalties. And Icebergs was the last man to finish there. But hopefully, you know you guys have enjoyed this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe. If you're new around here and if you did go on to enjoy this video, I will be back next week for the Canadian Grand Prix, probably one of my favourite tracks 
on the Formula 1 calendar. So hopefully you can come back and check that out next week. But as I said, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.